welcome to Horror Movies and Beyond. Today, I'm joined by the director and star of this intense, heart-stopping, horrifying film called Beaten to Death. Let's welcome Sam Curtin and Thomas Roach. Welcome. Hello. Thanks for having us. <laughs> yeah, good to be here. But it's horrifying in a great way. <laughs> Thank, a, you. Thank yeah. you. Yeah. We, we horrifying. No, in a good way. In a good way. They know what I mean. They know what I mean. <laughs> it I is a horror have, channel. I, yeah, oh yeah. It's very rare I get both the director and the star and the director who wrote it and produced it. It's like, oh my goodness. I, I was trying to figure out what to say, what to ask, because um, I don't know if you've seen previous posts out, um, that I put out that was like, oh my gosh, this is such a, the most intense, depressing, triggering, great movie I've ever seen. <laughs> um, it left me with so many questions and so many thoughts, and we will get into that. But first, it's about a desperate choice leads Jack down a path that leaves him beaten and bruised as he struggles against man, nature, and his own insanity. This story is it just really deep dive in the human condition, brutality, cruelty, and taking no accountability on some of the characters. I mean, just misguidance and all because of a bad decision. Sam, where did you find the strength to write this? Well, I need to give a shout out to um, my co-producer and co-writer, Ben John Clark as well, um, because we developed the story together. So uh, the way that it came about, it was a really simple concept where I woke up one morning and I just had a, a little seed of an idea for a movie about a character who's walking through the countryside blind, trying to find his way home. And so I gave a little pitch to Benny and I was like, I got this little idea. Don't know exactly what it is. He's like, I love it. Let's do it. I'm like, well, I don't know what it is yet. He's like, we'll figure it out. And so we sort of went from there. Um, we then pretty early on knew that there was only one guy who could play our lead. And that was Mr. Tom Roach here. <laughs> and so uh, when Tom said yes, you know, we were, we were a go. Um, as far as developing the story goes, um, that initial concept, like, yes, it's quite extreme. A guy gets to, his eyes gouged out. But um, at that point, we didn't really know how far we were going to take it. Um, we knew that it was going to be centered around Tom's character. And so you, whatever the movie was, you were really going to essentially have a, a, a front row seat to his experience. Um, and so it kind of, as Ben and I write, we have this, this, this method where we're kind of constantly trying to one up one another. So even though we didn't think initially, oh, it's going to be this really intense thing, just the way that we write, it just sort of built and built into that. When I, when I first watched this, I was like holding back tears because it just felt it just couldn't get any worse and then it does and then it gets worse and then it does and then it's like every situation he went through is just like okay it cannot get any like it, <laughs> if there has to be a glimmer of hope and then it's just one after another um this film opens up with the man walking with bloody clothes and we know something terrible has happened uh, we don't know how bad it is but it it gives you the moment of something just so horrific and tragic um was it to, to start it off in that kind of way was it to give us hope that whatever he went through whatever jack went through it, it must be over because this is it looks like the worst of the worst or was it just the start of um, taking the audience on a on a wild ride of no 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 this is nothing. Well, uh, if you look at the title, it gives a little bit away to as to what happens in the movie. Um, mm. But I mean, it, we we wanted it to be sort of quite the emotional roller coaster, um, where again, like you, you've got this front row seat with Jack, and he's going through so many emotions, whether that's grief self-pity hope and then ultimately he's even he's questioning his own existence i guess 
the the way that we started the the intent was to sort of bookend it as well where we wanted to show at the start this is what the movie is and this is ultimately how it's going to end thomas between um, you and Rachel. It was at this significant point of a romance. And then when they're in the bed and they're sleeping away from each other, something has led up to that point and we're at the point of where it starts. How was bringing those emotions? Because when we first look at her, you're like smiling and everything is just, you know, she's singing. She has a nice voice, by the way. <laughs> if, if that was her. <laughs> was that her? It was her real okay. voice. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Um, and then at this point we see Jack and it's just like, we have to do this. So, I mean, is it at that point where we see the relationship between you and her, like it is at the wit's end, we got to do something and you figured out a way that this is the only way, even though it's dangerous and we have no idea how, what we're going to do with it, but we need money fast. Yeah, sure. So I think, you know, obviously the, the. The reasons for all that were left fairly ambiguous in in the script and, and sort of for a reason you can sort of fill in the blanks but i mean nicole tudor who, who plays rachel made that you know very she's very good to sort of play off of she's she's a really great performer and um you know she obviously spends most of the movie dead <laughs> um we don't get to see much of much of that but i think you know those 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 couple of scenes that that she's in i think she she really shines so um yeah, sort of. It's a good relationship. It's 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 strong, but but clearly there's there's something very, you know, very big that's happened or is happening. Whether it's just sort of financial troubles or or, or what have you. Maybe they're about to lose their house or, or or whatever that sort of drives them to this bad decision and sort of trying to take essentially the easy way out. Um, so that's that's sort of how I played it. Like you know they're. You know they're they're strong they're they're a rock but they're they're faced with you know something that's potentially you know putting a lot of strain on their relationship so jack makes the decision to sort of probably take the easy way out rather than the hard one with obviously disastrous consequences um, another thing i noticed um about this film is that everything is up close like most of the shots is just up close, in your face, everything is close fist. It seemed personal and like discipline a child. Was mm. that intentional, um, Sam, when you, you were developing this? Like it ha no weapons. Um, it mm. just really had to be personal and close fist. Oh, I hadn't, hadn't quite thought of it in that way. Um, as far as the violence goes and the beatdowns, um, in a way, I think the, the, the guys dishing it out, they, they're doing it not necessarily because they want to, but because they feel like they have to for whatever reason. So, um, discipline's an interesting word to use because the, the first beating, it almost, it almost kind of is that like, you've wronged me, so I'm going to harm you back. Um, but then the motivation behind Ned, our second character, or our second sort of lead bad guy, um, he more comes from a place of loyalty where you hurt my brother. So through family, this, this toxic, twisted family loyalty, I now need to hurt you. Um, yeah, so that's that's an that's an interesting take on it, which I kind of I guess isn't too far off to um, to what it is in the movie. Yeah, the reason I said that because. Hmm. Um, they could use weapons and you could just end it, you know, it's just like a bat to the whatever and done. But it was like, it's mm. personal. I got to make sure you feel every hit and I feel it because I know this is right for you. Because it was like that speech he was giving in the beginning, you know, headshots and all this stuff. And I was really listening to that. And so it was mm. like, you know. You know, it, I could do the easy way, but I'm going to let you feel this because you may not, you won't survive this. And everything was mm -hmm. very up close. So um, I hope, Tom, you didn't actually get hit. <laughs> oh, I did. Yeah. Oh, you, you did? <laughs> did you say you did? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Oh, wow. Uh, so, like, uh, so myself and, and uh, Dave Tracy, who, who plays Ned in the movie, we had a, a really nice little worker relationship where, 
you know, we 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 met, I think, um, you know, a couple of days into shooting. He he sort of traveled down from from interstate to 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 play the role and we just sort of got stuck straight into things. But I think very early on we established we were sort of on the same page, you know, it's, a, it's a, you know, because it's it's a for me, it was a, it's a very physical performance. You know, that's what most of it is. There's not a, a lot of dialogue for me. I mean, there's, you know, there's a bit, but I think a lot, a lot of it just has to be um, communicated through body language and, you know, the fact that I've you know, had all this horrific stuff done to me. And, um, and he sort of realised that as well, that, you know, if we were going to make those scenes um really impactful and affecting like you say you know the 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 closed fist the 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 violence is very personal we we wanted to to really push that as far as we could so you know a few little bumps and bruises aren't gonna aren't gonna hurt you so um that dave is a very big guy um i'm not so big <laughs> so, yeah, he's he to, so yeah he was able to just throw me around like a rag doll and there's a there's a scene um just before one of the the bigger sort of climactic scenes between myself and and ned sort of in the first uh third of the film where uh he's just sort of grabbed me out after this little car chase and we've gone back into the farmhouse and he throws me into a wall um and yeah he was he was bouncing my head off that wall <laughs> over and over again and you can and it's those it's those little pieces that i think really really sell it because it's not it's not a pratfall. It's not, you know, someone sort of just pretending to get to get hit. We're we're sort of obviously we're doing it at a you know fairly low percentage, but but really making it look good. And you know, occasionally you do you do catch a good one, but um, you know, that's all part of the fun. Well, Tom, Tom is also a masochist. You can see the big grin on his face as he's talking about this stuff. So some of the blood was actually real. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> There not was... the not the blood, but uh, the vomit oh. was. Oh. Wait, really? <laughs> no. Uh. Well, you know what? Like I said, everything was so up close, and it did look like it was coming out your mouth. Did it? Well, it wasn't. Like... It was. It was coming right out of it. Yeah. That that was that was a real treat for everyone on set that day. <laughs> Poor old. Wait a minute! Uh, you really vomit? Yeah. Yeah. Well, I, I sort of discovered uh, on a previous film that we did um, that I was able to sort of do that on command. <laughs> But in the previous film, I was sort of hanging upside down when I did it, and um, um, so I thought, "Oh, let's just let's let's give it a go. Let's see if it'll work." And it took a lot more work this time because obviously gravity's not helping you because you're the right <laughs> way up. Um, so we spent, you know, a long time. Um, you know, I'm eating cold mushroom soup. I'm like chugging bottles of water and um, you know tr trying to get it get it moving and and. Um, Really, I think I just feel sorry for everybody else that was on set, especially um, our our sound guy who who was listening to the whole thing, you know, very very loudly in his in his headphones. Basically, everyone was everyone in the crew were were, were dry retching uh, uh, at the same time. So um, yeah, you know, but I think it all it was all worthwhile. It came across well on 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 film, so it looked good. Well, it looked bad, it looked terrible, but it's, that was the idea. <laughs> You know, as I was looking at that, I was like, "Man, these these practical effects or visual effects is awesome!" <laughs> oh man, you were really at it. Okay, all right, dedication. Yes. Um, uh, okay, to shift it a little bit, there was some obviously some disturbing scenes and unsettling scenes that happened. The first one is even though you were being uh, attacked and beaten. But when it was the decision to get rid of the eye, but then, you know, it was like, I'm going to get rid of the other eye. And then we, we, then the audience become the POV, like we become Jack. And then you see like, okay, it punctured and everything goes, bl uh, goes black, but the, the sound of whatever, what was happening to you was just, it was just excruciating it was I, I mean i i i just like but we're I, it felt like you felt it <laughs> because mm -hmm. we were you now was playing jack 
very um, exhausting mentally because as I'm watching this, I'm like, this guy must really yeah. have to have therapy after this be, to just be really brought down to the core, to the to where you were, the sounds you were making, the pain you felt, everything. Even though you know we wasn't there, but we felt the sorrow, the pain, and the moment you you know you had the gun, and then. It was like, it can't be that bad. And then, you know, when you try to do it again to your arm. And then I was like, I got to the point where I was like, it's a relief. I mean, I, you know, you don't want to say that, but it's like, what else could happen? There's nothing just wondering blindly. But um, no. for you to play this character, um, Thomas, to play Jack, like how draining and how much of yourself did you have to really put into the character but also uh keep yourself you know in a way where hey this is not real but yeah. you know keep your mind on this side of the fence so it doesn't like consume you like was that a struggle or you just went for it and then afterwards you you figured out later yeah look um well first of all i think i'd just like to um you know you mentioned the the scene where jack gets his second eye taken and and everything sort of goes black and you're just hearing the the sound design and stuff i just want to um compliment sam again on that scene that that's i think that's probably the most for me that's probably the most effective scene in the whole movie i think you know a, a big rule of filmmaking is you know it's not what you see it's what you don't see and um sam really took that quite literally in that mm -hmm. scene took everything away and i think you like like you say the the, the sounds um you know um that i'm making and the sound design of you know the the nails being sort of punched into the wall and i think just letting the audience's imagination take over at that point is just incredibly effective and a bit of a stroke of genius from old from old sam so i just want to pay him his due pay him his dues there but but um to your to your point uh, yeah look it, it was a very challenging role both physically and i guess mentally i mean but what I really sort of um, underestimated when when Sam offered me the role was just how physically demanding it would be. Even the days where you you're not really doing much, you're just crawling across a floor or or just walking through um, walking through the set, going from point A to point B. It's incredibly difficult because a you can't see, um, b you, you you're acting like your you, your body's in a state of shock so i'm constantly tensed up i'm shaking i'm so at the end of the day you're just you're just sore all over and um you know um you know not being able to see is tough i think i think i've spoken about it before and on a couple of other interviews that that it's it's it is incredibly isolating that you you know you because i had these heavy appliances over my eyes for a decent portion of the film and couldn't see anything at all so um, in between takes, you, you're not really involved in conversations because you don't know where anyone is. You don't know if people are speaking to you. So I, I just sort of withdrew into myself a little bit and just sort of sat quietly uh, and just sort of had thought about the next scene we were doing. Um, and yeah, look, Kat, you know, constantly, you know, crying and, and all, all this stuff in these scenes, It's it, it does sort of, I guess, you know, it you're acting but you're doing it so much that it starts to sort of you start to sort of fool yourself into it so yeah it, it does get a little bit much and I, you know in like you mentioned the the scene with the with the the shotgun um closely following that 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 sort of the eye gouge scene um and um yeah that was a particularly tough scene and that was probably the one scene in which i probably did mentally crack a a, a little bit um uh, had a little bit of a tizzy but um other than that look it, it's it's strange because you know you're there you're working with people that you've worked with for years um friends um so while the subject matter and the material is very heavy it's very dark and you know you have to pay respect to that uh, especially in order to get the job done it's also a, a lot of fun <laughs> so so there's yeah those there's those moments where you know it does get to you a little bit but for the most part you're just out there with your mates you know um playing pretend and um you, you're covered in sort of all this gunk and blood and you're in the middle of 
you know, nowhere at this old dilapidated farming property. And you generally just having a good time. So it's 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 um yeah, there's a lot of lot of push and pull with it. Um, but really the the mental side of things was was probably fine because you know I felt very safe mostly with um, <laughs> with the guys. Um, <laughs> That's they looked good. Up, they, yeah, they, they looked after me. They looked after me re really well, and you know I've got a very good relationship with all of them. So that that made the process a lot easier. But it was it was more the the physical demands of the role that that surprised me. And you know Sam mentioned earlier that oh yeah you know. We didn't originally really intend for it to be this extreme and you know ben's like one upping sam and sam's one upping ben and you know meanwhile i'm just there just oblivious <laughs> to the fact that this is just getting worse and worse and worse for me as they go along i i came out of it with um a few bumps and bruises and um a bit of exhaustion and and stuff like that but at the end of the day you know it, it was uh, it was absolutely worth it I'd, I'd absolutely do it again so yeah Okay. Beaten to death too. Yeah, no. <laughs> uh, I, I thought I thought of this as you were talking, and, and as I brought up that um, those particular scenes. So Sam, when writing this and then actually filming this, was there ever a thought of worry that um, the way someone was going through such horrific challenges and then trying to make a choice to not be here was that a challenge to convey that on paper where it's not. Um, the e he's not it's not a reason he would take an easy way out so it doesn't kind of glorify like him getting out of it or it's just what would you do in a situation where it's just tragic you know the girlfriend or wife is gone you, you're getting beaten to death was that a, a challenge to show the audience what you you really meant versus how they would feel was that in, in between the line there yeah, it's kind of a between the lines thing. Like with with the movie in general, um, we sort of we're, we're not trying to necessarily dictate meaning with it. We're we're more interested in um, people's interpretation to it, and so that's something that we find really interesting because um, different different viewers, different audiences have totally different responses to the movie. So, um, and like we read reviews, and so. Um, Someone can can see one aspect or, or have have a particular takeaway, which is completely different to someone else. Um, so, as far as those scenes go, they're really it's really up to the interpretation of of the viewer. I think, yeah. The other unsettling scene is when you know um, Jack gets in the car and it's just like this. You you know, I'm saved. <laughs> Everything is yeah. saved. And it's like, yes, you're rooting for that. You're kind of like, you know, you could breathe and, and feel okay. But then you just keep going back to that house. You keep going back to the house. And he went back to the house like four times. And it was like this endless cycle of the bad choice, you know? Mm -hmm. and, and I think that happens in real life. I think this movie was really close to how it is in real life. It's not always fairy tales at the end. I think it's very important to know in this film, like, yeah, all this stuff is happening, but it was a choice to go there and you didn't have mm. to. Yeah, and, yeah, yeah, exactly. And um, so something that we wanted to do with Jack um, and we, so the the, the, the story is told in a nonlinear way. Um, and so you don't actually find out Jack's reason for being in the situation until sort of halfway through the movie. And when you do learn that um, he essentially put them in that position, um, I don't think that you lose, you don't necessarily lose sympathy for him, um, but it doesn't become so black and white that he's purely a victim. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, so yeah. as far as um, the scene you mentioned as well, when, when you think that he's essentially being saved um we, we were also like playing again like the emotional roller coaster where you think that he's finally being saved and so you feel like it's going to be a really cathartic moment yes he's made it he's in the hospital but then at the end our movie's called beaten to death and so we're still gonna pull the rug out from under you and it's not going to be a good time yeah mm -hmm. 
Yeah, you're you're absolutely <laughs> right about that. But I I I mean personally, I've been in a situation where it was so bad, and you just think like finally I'm out of it, even though you are not exactly out of it, but you have that <clears throat> feeling like it, you're right there. You know, he got in the car, someone is helping him, and then he gets right back to the place he keeps escaping, and mm. it was just. I mean, it's called beaten to death, but it it threw it was threw you off for a second when he was just walking and oh man, it was just so I just felt so bad for Jake. I was just like, oh my god, I'm sorry <laughs> because I felt defeated in my life on certain things, and I was just like, I mean. If you're all the way down, there's nowhere to go but up. But even for him, there was nowhere to go. Like, it, ugh, mm. I'm sorry. <laughs> I just, I'll take my glasses off. And then it was just like, can he have hope? And no, no, everything was coming out, guts. I mean, just, I just felt so bad. I was like, the, the only person that got the easy way out was Rachel. <laughs> that was the only yeah. one because she yeah, didn't have to quick. go through that that is yeah, true that just, is true oh i'm so sorry like i yeah. was i i've seen i watch a lot of horror movies and and dramas and thrillers and things like people getting beaten up and everything but it was just i just got personal with his character and the whole story because mm -hmm. life is mm -hmm. like that it's not always great at the end and it really showed you know, hope, perseverance, and sometimes you're disappointed. It's just the yeah. way it, life is. And I think mm -hmm. it was very, it was it, very well written to show the stages of, you know, denial. Like he can't see, he's like, oh, I'm going to make it. And, and then you have the family trying to um, justify what is happening when his brother w was talking. Oh, he's just, you know, I, he, he said he was the, the good one. You know, mm -hmm. now you're with me. I'm about to get your eyes. I was like, oh, I can imagine how mom was in. <laughs> so she can't move, but I can imagine how she was. Um, she birthed them. I want to say thank you guys for coming on here and talking about being to death. I'm, I, this was one I wanted to talk about, and I'm just like, I'm kind of starstruck. And I've talked to a lot of you because I really, really did feel this for this movie. And I'm just so happy I'm able to talk to you guys. So this film is on BOD. Um, they could stream it where, you know, video on demand. Correct, right? Yes. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yes. Mm. Oh, um, yeah. All of your, um, your iTunes, your uh, Google, Amazons. <laughs> Any part yeah, two? No, well, <laughs> is there a part two? Well, we'd like to thank you as well. Yeah. <laughs> um, thank you for having us on. It's been really fun. We're yeah, glad. We're, we're really happy that you've you've had had the the response to it that, that you have. I didn't mean. I a mean, part not, two. not not in a, not in a bad way. <laughs> we're glad you liked it. <laughs> yeah, <that's all. laughs> glad that it's uh, resonating with you. Oh. If I can just say one last thing as well, okay. is that um, okay. as as Tom said before, um, that. At the time, like it's it's uh, making a horror movie is is actually like really fun. So sometimes it's hard to kind of go back to those places, um, th those the dark places of the storyline. When a lot of my memories of making the movie it was just really fun, hanging out with your friends, making a movie. Yeah, yeah it's, it's it's easy to lose perspective when you're on our our end of things, but but it's good to yeah. you know see people have those reactions to it it's it's really satisfying to sort of hear other people you know react to the to the movie so you, you <laughs> sort of start to remember oh yeah god yeah this is pretty grim yeah yeah, <laughs> yeah exactly <laughs> uh but like i say thank you uh sam and tom and thank you everybody for watching make sure you check out being to death on vod if you have not checked it out already, um, you you have to see it. I mean, it, it it is intense, but there's a story and meaning behind it. It's right there. Check it out. Until next time, thank you so much. Bye, everyone. Thank you. Cheers.